So I'm back, and I uh, <laughs> just watched, like, so many Agnes Varda movies. You have no idea. Most of them I really loved. Two of them, not so much. Um, one, I'll explain. The other one, well, I'll explain both. Um, so the first one was actually the one I loved the most, and this was Lions, Love, and Lies, which is on the Agnes Varda in California set from Criterion. Um, it's on Filmstruck. It's not one of the ones that's expiring, so you should be able to watch it. If it expires from Filmstruck, you should be able to watch it on the Criterion channel. Um, she filmed this in 1968. It stars Warhol superstar Viva, as well as James Rado and Jerome Ragney, who created and starred in the rock musical Hair as well as Shirley Clark, the director. Um, basically, it's like if Varda made a Warhol film, but with a little more um, structure to it than Warhol does, as well as a very interesting take on the way in which we engage with uh, society and the way in which um, the news of, of the day is, is um, or at least at that time, was um, received through television. And, and for a film, there's quite a bit of, of them watching television in this. They watch uh, Lost Horizon, because my world's collided a little bit. They watch a couple other films. They watch a Bobby Kennedy speech. They watch Bobby Kennedy being assassinated. They watch several other pivotal, pivotal 68 moments in on TV. The rest of it is sort of them lounging about in their house in L.A. and sort of a, a commentary on Los Angeles dropout culture and like that counterculture 60s um, feeling. And, and the thing with, the, with Viva is, is she kind of, Viva's character anyways, Viva that she's playing, she kind of wants more, but she's not able to um, put in the effort to actually get more out of life. Um, this film is so beautifully art directed. Like I want to move into their apartment so bad. Loved everything about this movie. It has great commentary on Hollywood. Um, the way that old Hollywood is, is uh, mystified, but the way that Hollywood itself doesn't necessarily, at least in 1968, didn't really, um, appreciate its own past. They talk about how there's no cinema tech and the closest thing they have is Larry Edmonds. There's a beautiful sequence in Larry Edmonds. Thankfully now LA has several cinema techs. Um, and the Egyptian theater is right in Hollywood. But it's an interesting look at a time and a place. And all of the films on the, the uh, Agnes Varda and California set really are like that. It's this beautiful set. I highly recommend buying it. So the next film I watched, also from the uh, Agnes Varda and California set, is Documentar, which is uh, just over an hour long, and it stars Sabine Memu as a... Um, woman who's recently divorced moved to France with her son played by Varda's real life son Matthew and um, it has a lot to say about isolation, about motherhood about the um, relationship between mothers and their children and children and their mothers, about um, living in LA, about um well, just all kinds of things. It was done at the exact same time as Mir Mir, and so there's bits of Mir Mir in Documenter and bits of Documenter in Mir Mir, and you should really watch them back and forth. I watched Mir Mir a few weeks ago, so I did that out of order. Um, whoops. This one was great. Um, the next film I watched, I absolutely adored. This was um, Jane B. Par Agnes V., also it's starring Jane Birkin, and it was basically a present to Jane Birkin for her 40th birthday. She was freaking out about turning 40, and Varda's like, let's do a portrait of your life. But also, it's a mixture of, um, so it's documentary, but then there's also scenes where Jane is playing characters that she always wanted to play, or characters that Varda thinks she should play. There's this great moment where Jane is um, uh, Laurel Hardy, Laurel and, sorry, Laurel Hardy, Stan Laurel and uh, Italian actress Laura Betti is is um, Oliver Hardy and they have like a pie fight and it's brilliant. Um, it's just a beautiful look at 
what it is to be Jane Birkin, what it, what it is to be a person, what it is to age, what it is to watch yourself age as an actress, as someone whose life has been documented, and then taking that documentation and flipping it on its head and presenting a work of art, at, your life as a work of art. Um, it's a, just a beautiful film. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, the next film I did not like that much. This is Kung Fu Master, also known as Le, Pet Le Petit de Mort, also starring Jane Birkin, uh, Matthew Demi, and um, Birkin's daughter, uh, Charlotte Kingsburg. This one is up there with Pauline at the beach with like French films about older people being in love with teenagers that I just can't get behind. Like, Birkin is a 40 year old who falls in love with the 14 year old friend or 15 year old friend of her, or not even friend, like, um, classmate of her daughter. And it's a little creepy. And, like, spoiler alert, it ends with, like, them having to break up. But the film is not very judgmental of the characters, which I guess is a positive, except that I want to judge them because it felt like pedophilia to me. And, and Pauline at the Beach felt the same way. And that's a um, Romare film. And I just... There's something about the 80s and, like, 40-year-old French people dating teenagers. And I'm like, you know what? I don't like it when Woody Allen does it. I don't like it when it's in these movies. I don't know that you can say the heart ones with the heart ones when teenagers are involved. I just don't think so. So um, I found this movie kind of gross, and that was hard to watch. Um, it's very seriously done, which also makes it hard to watch because it's such a serious look at this um, subject. Uh, the next film I watched, I couldn't get into, and part of the problem is it's a documentary about the films of Jack Demi, and I've only seen Umbrellas of Cherbourg. I really don't like musicals, and I'm afraid that if I rewatch Umbrellas of Cherbourg, I might not even like that anymore, because I saw it when I was a teenager. So I watched it because it's expiring on Filmstruck. Um, oh, by the way, the two Jane Birkin films are expiring on Filmstruck as well, so you should get those watched. Um, I would probably get more out of the Demi doc if I had seen more Demi films. The one thing I will say that I enjoy about it, enjoyed about it was the playful way in which um, Varda traced her husband's career. She does not do it in chronological order. She sort of jumps around from this subject to that subject to this subject, and it, it makes sense. Even though it's not chronologically done, the through line of themes that she draws is really fascinating. Um, and you can just see how much she loves her husband in this, this documentary. The last film I watched, also expiring, one of the best things I've ever seen. This is The Gleaners and I. Um, gleaning is a thing in uh, France for sure, probably elsewhere. Um, but it's like there's laws about it in France where you um, people take the uh, leftover food and things from harvests. And um, Varda follows several regions of, of people taking harvest leftover harvested food as well as people who are in the city so in the uh, rural areas and then people in the city who um do the same thing with grocery stores as well as people who take um leftover electronics and other things and it it just has a lot to say about modern waste and modern consumerism and there's this great sequence with a chef who um is a two-star Michelin chef who is a gleaner, who, who gets a lot of his stuff from um, the country around him because it's just going to go to waste, and at least this way he knows where it's coming from. And he talks about how everything that goes in his dishes are used. Uh, the bones are used for soup. Like, everything is used. Nothing goes to waste. And, and it's an interesting look at how nonchalantly we waste things, especially in the food industry, and how this needs to change. And I know in France they've done a lot, I think probably – due to this documentary, to change that, they um, have tested a lot of, like, lowering prices on fruit that looks strange and things like that to try to um, sell it to people. Um, the ending is will break your heart. Like, the ending of this film will break your heart. Varda is beautiful. I love her so much. There's a lot of cats in these movies. Um, she's She talks about aging in this one. Um, and she's alive for another 17 years after she made this movie. It's amazing. Um, she's a living legend. I love her. I still have several of her films to watch. 
but I've now watched all the ones that are on Filmstruck, and I just need to track down the rest of her films if they're available. I don't know, but um, she's fantastic, and if you're not familiar with her films, please check them out. Her documentaries are very different from her features, but they're all very distinctly her. She has a unique cinematic voice, and um, she is the mother of us all.